So, to go in that direction, if we think about the relationship between certainty and uncertainty, we would not have to concentrate on their qualities as opposites. So I'm already suggesting here a change of focus. Not on the qualities of each thing as opposite each other, but on their relationship. Because what we're going to discuss is the fact that they only exist in relationship. They are incontrovertible ingredients in an important relationship, in a vital relationship. So that's a shift of focus right there. People get this? No? We're talking not about the qualities of uncertainty versus certainty <coughs> and certainty, but talking about the relationship. It's like if you have two friends. You could talk about mm, uh, Joe and Mary, Joe as Joe and all of Joe's problems and strengths and Mary's problems and strengths. Or you can talk about their relationship. Those things may come in, but the arena of talking about their relationship is a different thing than talking about their individual opposites. <coughs> we have to have two things in order to make a relationship. If there was only black, there'd be no relationship. Black exists because it, has, it is the opposite in relationship to white or good and bad, or high and low, or inside and outside. All of these things are relational matrices. They define each other. Okay? Here we have certainty and uncertainty, which are not individual things we will discover, I believe, but individual rhythms of some central relationship. You have two places on a map, then you can draw a line between the two and have a relationship between here and there. So, in this scenario, we have to remember that if we're going, if we're going to start looking at it this way, one thing that becomes a change immediately is that although the topic of this ASM is uncertainty, that means the topic of this ASM is also certainty. Because you can't separate them. I have all kinds of little handwritten notes here. I've got to decipher them. <laughs> Here I wrote, from this perspective, much like chaos theory, uncertainty is an essential ingredient in making reality what it is. Okay. But in this scenario, we must remember that certainty is the other half of this relationship. And it seems that we need both because we are made of relationship, always and forever. We are not always trying to conquer or acclimatize ourselves to uncertainty. We are remembering certainty, too. Because, you know, in spiritual work, one of the pitfalls, is many, many pitfalls of getting into spiritual work. It's really, it's really something people should avoid. <laughs> but if you were foolish enough to fall into that, I wrote here, there's sometimes a tendency to devalue certainty. But without it, we could not have an experience, this relationship, of this relationship that I'm trying to describe. People getting this? Mm -hmm. We cannot disregard the validity, importance, and high spirituality of relating to certainty as well, and even more important, to its place as uncertainty's partner. Let's, let's pause for a minute and let's, let me hear a little bit from you guys so I, you know, so I can both clarify things that I wasn't clear about and also so I can feel you, if you have anything to say. 
I was thinking of change and how change in the world is certain, but change is also associated with uncertainty. Right. So it's a it sort of pulls them together. Mm -hmm. They're braided. Yeah. Is it possible that certainty has levels of uncertainty within it? It depends upon what model you want to use for this. So when River just talked, I talked about the braiding of certainty and uncertainty. But if I used another metaphor, we could talk about the certainty within uncertainty and the uncertainty within certainty. And then we're getting into levels and dimensionality of, of that as well. Absolutely. It depends upon what metaphor appeals to you. Metaphors are not uh, suggestions about what reality is. Metaphors are a way of talking about reality. Because I was thinking that I could have fear with certainty as well as uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. Yes, who's back there? Melissa. Melissa. Yeah, uh, okay. It's interesting because my husband and I were experiencing um, joy at my daughter telling us that she was pregnant and had, you know, did the first grandchild. And then had the certainty that we were going to meet this new person. And then she lost the baby, so um, there was then that um, the uncertainty that then, no, there was nothing there. And so what I realized I did in, in the midst of that was saying, I don't want to have a relationship with uncertainty anymore. I want to be certain about not ever wanting to have a grandchild again because I don't want to have to have the hope of, and the hope stash. So I was trying to make myself certain in the midst of a, something that can't be certain. You know, so I, it, that was my way of making myself comfortable. Saying I'm done with having, you know, I'm just going to accept the fact that we may never be grandparents. So it's interesting to, to, you know, try to feel into that space and realize how I was trying to control reality um, in order to have the outcome I wanted, and and also to cause myself less pain. That if I didn't have to hope for something that may not come about because this has happened more than once. Um, that then I could feel more comfortable in that space. It's a human thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. But it doesn't work, does it? No, because I'm just blowing myself. Right. Hmm. But it's a human thing to do. Yeah. We understand this. <coughs> Terry? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about walking. Yeah. And there's a step and then there's for the toddler to fall and then catch and get reinforced and it becomes memorized and you start living by memory to, to move. And I'm thinking about an exercise of forgetting remembering with walking. And the volition desire of certainty, uncertain and and that how that's packed into the the moment itself and the aliveness of living from that place. I don't know where my foot's going to go. I catch myself. I'm in this feeling of competency. Um, but then coming back to holding those opposites and that desire and just being with that as a reactive object. I also felt a relief when you started to allow certainty to have its space in the room, too. So I, I feel the invitation to the con. And then just let it be Yeah, very interesting. <coughs> Magus? Yeah, I, I could follow you 
Firstly, when you were talking about uncertainty and question, it, this certainty is much harder for me. And uh, I, even I can't see where certainty is. When I look at something and as it being certain, I feel it's not. Uh, even when I, I think of uh, ev everything is changed, it's, it's changing. Not everything is changing. No. Eventually it is. But at this moment, not everything is changing. Like what point? Like that I'm sitting here on my chair. It's now, and it's five minutes ago, and I'm, I changed position. <laughs> and even that, even when I say that, that's, I don't know. I don't know that for sure. So certainty is so so hard for me to grasp. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's we'll see what happens by the end. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm being serious. Because people are going to come to this with different problems, so to speak. We have different characteristics, we have different woundings, we have different talents, we have different, you know what I mean? And some, it's, so it's interesting to hear this because it's, it's, it's just very interesting. However, this talk is still not about being with one or the other. We have to discover a lot more about what the relationship is between these two things and what it's like to relate to the relationship. So we're going to add to this and we'll see where it leads. Leah, do you have your hand? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say something about my experience connecting up with something you said much earlier about Physical sensation in the body, and holding up more. But the more you're talking about this, the more quickening of my physical body, my heart's racing. Um, I don't want to label it as anxiety, but um, it's a similar experience I have to nesting with opposites. Mm -hmm. And I am really similar. As I, as the opposites, as I, as I hold them closer, this kind of tension in my body and the, the sensations start. So I'm. Um, I to say about that. Mm. I would have a lot to say about I am practice in this case, but I won't. Mm. But I hear you. Shall we? Yes. I was thinking the relation, <coughs> it seems that relationship itself has includes or has something to do with uncertainty and certainty that the the physics or the energy of relationship has its itself is a built has has to have it has to have both certainty and uncertainty. I was thinking about in art or dance or music when something is this combination of I wonder and of course and where those two meet is the is the art or the note or the poem. I agree. I'm going to actually talk about that in a couple pages from now. Exactly that. I think you're really on target with this. So again, just to kind of refocus us just for a moment, we are trying to break free of our gravitational <coughs> about looking at Certainty and uncertainty. No, actually, uncertainty is on this side. Uncertainty. <laughs> As individuals. And look at the relationship. In actuality, individual individuality depends upon relationship, actually, in the ultimate level. But we're trying to break free of our habitual gravitational pull to looking at uncertainty and trying to make pals with that if we're afraid of that. We're looking at certainty and trying to make pals with that if we're afraid. We're not doing that. 
we want to say, is there another way to do this that has to do with looking at the simultaneity of relationship and the things that we talk about in terms of relationship that are of a different order than the things we talk about when we're talking about individual characteristics. Okay? So as we're talking about this new relational language, let's add, let's take another step, and let's add one more thing to this relationship, which has to do with us, which is let's add to this relationship our own preferences. Okay? Let's add our own preferences. We Many people might, and, and here, Mary, so I'm just going to go with the general feeling of uncertainty being the thing we don't like. Well, your thing is valid as well, absolutely. Our, maybe we have to even add our dislike of uncertainty. And our dislike of uncertainty is not something from this perspective that we need to cure. If you want to see the relationship of this whole matrix, maybe we have to say our dislike of uncertainty is not something we have to cure, but something we have to see. You get the difference? Absolutely. It's something we have to see, and that's an, that it is an essential ingredient in this relationship as well. I wrote, maybe we have to go beyond the thought that we need to become comfortable with uncertainty and instead include another certainty, that despite being spiritual people, we do not like uncertainty and wish to avoid it when possible. Just as it is, not fixing that, leaving that for the moment alone. You get this? Mm -hmm. There's already a little bit of frisson of energy. You know, a little. You can, if, you, if you let yourself feel it, there's something there. So our dislike is part of this combination. Our relationship as well. It can't be denied. Yes? Um, I'm Irene. We haven't met yet. Hi, Irene. I'm in a new class in Boston. Hi. Um, and I don't know if I'm on track or off track, but going back to something you said earlier about uncertainty and fear can bring out the worst in people. Um, it strikes me and what you're saying now about you can accept it as a given that none of us like uncertainty. But I think there's a spectrum. And some people are much more comfortable with it. And some people are, you know, they have to do the same thing every day because they can't tolerate any uncertainty. So when we're dealing with other people, in relationship with other people, it never occurred to me to think about how uncertainty plays in their life, how it plays in my life, and how maybe we see things differently. And the whole business of people being attracted to strong men, I think this is a really important dynamic to understand right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, because when fear comes into it, people kind of stop thinking. Absolutely, absolutely. And there is a spectrum, as you say. So, I'm going to return to my, my text. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe on the way to this new level of thinking, we don't have to get cozy with uncertainty. But we can face everything it brings up directly. You understand why this is important? Getting cozy with uncertainty is a way of making it certain. If we don't do that, if we include our dislike or fear of uncertainty, as it is, as it is, it brings up stuff that we can face directly and just be there with that without changing it. This is on the way to having a new relationship with uncertainty. We could even add some psychological support here, but psychological with a, a kind of twist, not emotional psychology so much as functional. For example, we could stand back a bit and discuss the psychological ways and even the physiological ways 
We determine if something is certain or uncertain. Where, what are our, our antenna? Well, we go, that's, that's certain. And I don't like that. Or I, that's certain and I like that. Or this is uncertain and I don't like that. How do we do that? What is the psychological mechanism? What's the physiological mechanism? The cues. How do we do that? And even there, if we're going to add that to the relationship, the relational matrix now, we're dealing with a very big relationship of moments in time where we are facing certainty and uncertainty and our dislike of whatever side and having this whole matrix there as we become more and more aware on level upon level upon level and stay present. So we are, we are using psychology here not in a psychotypical psychological way which is to solve it in some way so we can be certain again, but to see it directly without trying to change it. If you want to see the nature of something, you can't change it. If you want to know the nature of fire, you can't change it into water. You have to need fire. And likewise, if you want to know the nature of water, you can't change it into air. You want to know the dynamics of water directly. So this is, this is a central point for me in this talk. The transmutational, alchemical moment of actually meeting something with awareness that you are not going to bend to your will. You're not going to, to change it because you want to meet its nature. And in meeting its nature, you're going to meet your nature. And in meeting your nature, you're going to meet the nature of the world. Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. It's a lot to take in, but... Anybody want to say anything? You can just kind of scream. This <laughs> <laughs> is just oh. bringing up the quantum physics idea that you cannot engage with something even as an observer without changing the nature of it. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let's go a little further in, in physics for, for a moment. Uh, what that actually led to, that's Heisenberg's principle, what that actually led to was quantum entanglement. Because uncertainty and certainty on a physics level are entangled. They're entangled. In quantum entanglement, for those who don't know what that is, is this very, very interesting uh, property of reality, where if you, if you generate a photon, let's say, and, or any particle, an electron, and split it, and send one there, and send one here, if you change something about this, this automatically changes. If you change the spin, this spin changes. And on a theoretical basis, it doesn't matter if it is an angstrom apart, or if it's on the other side of the galaxy. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. <laughs> he did not like it. He felt there was a hidden variable and onto something else that, but despite how it's going to be resolved, Bell proved that this was true mathematically. And what this just means is this That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Interconnectedness. It means this. It means that everything is connected. Right. Everything is connected. Uncertainty, certainty. Hmm. Jack? I just wanted to um, add to Paul's point about uh, the uh, impact of meeting something as it is and whether that thing changes <coughs> by virtue of our meeting it. Exactly. And, and the truth is, I think, that when we meet uncertainty, certainty as it is, uncertainty, certainty changes, and we do too. Absolutely. That's going to be where we're going with it. Okay. 
Absolutely. So I, I missed thank for the clarification. I kind of missed your point. Yes, ma'am. I, I want to come back on what I said, said before yes. about certainty. Because it occurs to me that maybe my difficulties with certainty is a fear of uncertainty. I that's, think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I make it certainty that it exists. Right. So that's my right. right. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Right? <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Yes. I'm just trying to clear up my thinking because I, I realize that I'm making some suppositions. Um, I guess I would say I'm looking at a, a river. An inherent right. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, you're married. You're married to one. Um, and apparently, <laughs> the, there is certainty and uncertainty within what I'm looking at. Absolutely. I'm also there's also this piece of me, or or I am thinking about the piece of me that says inherently. There is uncertainty and certainty in who I am, and includes, and what it includes is disliking and discomfort and like and discomfort. I, I'm making a jump and probably be more cer certain, but it feels like certainty and uncertainty are. That's what what that's the only thing that is, and everything else is a resonance of some way, and it may it may include other things, but it's really just what is. I mean, it's like the basic the, the basic one. You know, that's the one. It's, it's when we say multiplicity in one that. That's the one, and I don't know if I'm just trying to make this jump to try to figure out how can I look at this. Uh, see, from the point of view of what we're talking about, yeah, I don't care. No. The reason I don't care is that whatever you're doing, include it. Okay. If you're trying to make yourself more comfortable, let's say, say I'm trying. then this is, some, this is something that I do in this situation. If it's something that you're having an insight about, which is also I think, what you're doing, actually, you include that as well. The fact that you will try and I will try to make myself more certain goes without saying. And there's two ways to deal with that, linearly and in this mist that I'm talking about. Linearly, it's like, well, I should make, because there's an implication. If I, I don't know if I'm making this leap and trying to make myself more certain, maybe I should stop that and do something else. There's a hidden variable in there, a hidden yeah. implication. And I'm saying, I don't care about your, your, your that hidden implication. Uh -huh. That's human. That's part of the whole thing. We're, we're, all we want to do is peel back the layers and reveal, reveal, reveal the totality of this interaction with this fundamental aspect of reality, which is going to do th stuff to us.